it's a pretty lovely and once again a highly chilly evening from Jelly, but still it is quite enchanting one and we welcome you to this particular session. So in this particular session, as you can see flashing on your screen, so we are going to start yet another topic, section 4. Of course, we have finished section 3, which was quite formidable, and section 2 also, because it dealt with common control, and you can always expect a long question from common control. I hope by now everything is absolutely clear to each one of you and good good morning, sorry, good evening to one and all once again and at the same time those who have connected with us to says a lovely, lovely good evening to everyone. So now we are going to start this particular sec uh, section without much ado and we come directly to the business end. So you have seen the section, I will require the space, I will create the space and now we are going to write a lot. Yes, we are going to write a lot, even though it is uh, freezing cold here in Delhi today. And since last three, four days, actually, it is very, very cold out here. So we start today's this particular session. And I told you as far as this particular session is concerned, correct? Uh, it deals with books of acquiry company. But when we will have to prepare the books of acquiry company, that is also a major question. If you remember in the initial stages, I did talked about this particular fact that we can acquire the control of the other entity either through majority strikes or by way of agreement. But generally under such a situation, the existence of the other entity continues. Other entity doesn't come to an end. Existence of the other entity doesn't come to an end. Rather, it remains what we call under control of the acquirer. However, under rare circumstances, we can also get hold of the other enterprise by simply taking over their all the what we call assets and liability. And if we remember, under such a circumstance, I talked about this particular fact that the existence of the other entity will, will come to an end. So when the existence of the other entity will come to an end, in that case, how the accounting will be done in the books of the acquiry company that you need to know. And for the, for the same, we are going to actually see this particular section. So, first of all, let me, let me actually write the heading of this particular section, section 4. And as I have already told you, this particular section deals with books of acquiry company. So, kindly write and be honest. Don't think that everything is written in the notes, so you should refrain from what we call writing. Books of acquiry company. Books of acquiry company. Correct. Just a moment ago, I told you this particular concept we would require only when the situation will be like this. When acquirer, when acquirer, when acquirer acquires, acquiry company, when acquirer acquires, acquiry company, acquiry company by purchasing by purchasing its net assets its net assets so when we are going to take all the assets and liabilities quite obviously in this case the existence of the other entity will come to an end. When acquirer acquires acquiry company by purchasing its net assets and and existence and existence of acquiry company existence of acquiry company comes to an end. So, under such circumstances, you need to know actually how the acquiry company would actually prepare its accounts. So, in order to know that, I will take a little bit what we call back. If you remember actually, in your earlier phases of education, you have done a chapter by the name of partnership or at some or other point of time, you might have done desolation, should I say so. Desolation of partnership, you remember. Even the desolation of partnership, even under the desolation of partnership, the business comes to an end. And over there, do you remember actually what account you used to prepare? Please let me know actually if you remember, some of you. Which accounts you used to prepare? If you remember and if you are going to put up a little bit of what we call 
stress upon what we call your mind, you will come to know and you will recapitulate that you used to prepare a realization account. Then you used to prepare partners capital account because partners are the owners of the business. And besides that, you used to prepare the cash account. I hope I'm right. Isn't it or not? So these accounts you used to prepare and you know how you used to prepare. So same analogy now you can derive with respect to what we call acquiry company. Now you will have to look from the perspective of the acquiry company because the business of the acquiry company has come to an end. So here also you are going to actually prepare those accounts which I just mentioned but with a with little bit of difference. Realization account you are going to prepare. Over there in partnership you used to prepare actually partners capital account they are owners but in case of a company as you know the owner supposed to be the shareholders so you are going to prepare the shareholders account cash account also you will prepare but only difference is that this time the business is coming to an end because somebody is purchasing our business. Whereas in case of partnership, this was not the scenario, isn't it or not? So that is the reason here, besides these three accounts, which I just mentioned, we will, we will have to prepare purchasing company account also. Now kindly write along with me. So as far as accounting is concerned in this particular case, now we come over directly to the accounting portion. Accounting. Accounting. As far as accounting is concerned, a moment ago I told you, Acquiry company, acquiry company, acquiry company, acquiry company shall open, shall open, please take the pain of writing, shall open following accounts, following accounts. So in the books of acquiry company, we are going to open these accounts which I just mentioned one realization account we are going to open realization account correct realization account besides that we are going to open shareholders account or owners account as you can say so shareholders are owners shareholders account Then we are supposed to prepare cash bank account and besides these three accounts we will have to prepare one more account that is acquirer company account, acquirer company account, acquirer company account or purchasing company account you may call it acquirer company account. Now the next question is how we are going to <coughs> prepare these accounts. The point is this. In order to prepare these accounts, first of all, under the first step, what we are supposed to do, first step, see here, please, and don't skip a point. Lots of questions are being asked from this particular area that I will tell you later on. Correct? First, your basics should be absolutely and absolutely clear and conceptuality should be very, very strong. Now, under the first, first step, because we are the company whose business has come to an end we have got now liquidated everything we have to visualize from the perspective of the acquiry company as i just told you now under the first step what we are going to do we are going to close all our assets so your first step will deal with closer of asset site that is closer of asset site so i will write here closer of asset site closer of asset site closer of asset site Closure of asset site. So first of all, we are going to close the asset site. In order to close the asset site, I am going to prepare a diagram. First of all, we need to know the meaning of asset site. Entire asset site can be divided into two major parts. Entire asset site can be divided into two major parts. See, every item which is present towards the asset site cannot be classified as an asset. For example, often you might have seen actually that on the asset side we come across items like discount on issue of shares, discount on debentures, preliminary expenses, underwriting commission. So even though these items appear on the asset side, but we cannot actually categorize them as asset because as per the accounting framework, correct? What is the definition of an asset? Definition of an asset as per the accounting framework is it is a resource which is controlled by an enterprise and it is capable of fetching your returns for a prolonged period of time. That is how we classify the assets. 
So technically on the asset side, first of all, for simplicity's sake, I am going to divide it into two parts. Entire asset side can be divided into two parts, correct? On the asset side, there will be some items which will be classified as assets. Now, I just told you the meaning of assets, correct? And besides that, there might be some items we, which are appearing on the asset side, but technically they are not in real sense assets. We will call them valueless asset. Although it is not a legal jargon, this is just for simplification, I am writing valueless items, correct? Valueless item. I gave you the example of valueless item just a moment ago. For example, as far as valueless items are concerned, examples are like preliminary expenses. Preliminary expenses, if you want to write. Preliminary expenses. Preliminary expenses, underwriting commission in short form, I have written U oblique C. Discount on issue of shares and debentures. Discount on shares and debentures. Any suspense account. Any suspense account. Any miscellaneous expenditure item. So all these items are basically classified as valueless items. Technically, they are not assets. Is it clear to you or not? So on the asset side, first of all, you need to know, uh, being a professional student especially, that basically asset side comprises of two things. One, assets which in real sense are assets. And another one is valueless asset. They appear on the asset side simply because they have debit balance. Otherwise, they have got no value. Is it clear to you or not? Once you know all these things, now second point is that then, as far as assets are concerned, even assets can be divided into two parts. Even assets can be divided into two parts. Even assets can be divided into two parts. One, I will say, for simplicity, say cash or bank. Cash or bank. Cash bank. And other assets or assets other than cash, correct? Assets other than cash. 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 Is it clear to you or not? Right, sir, it is clear to us. So if it is clear to us, I told you under the first step, you are going to close your asset side. That means you have to transfer every item of assets towards some other account. In fact, uh, one among what we call the accounts, which I just mentioned earlier. So as far as valueless items are concerned, quite obviously, when new company will take over your business, do you think the new company or the other company will ever take over your valueless item. No one will take over your valueless item. If I am purchasing the business of somebody, I will refrain myself from taking over their valueless assets. So that is why valueless assets are never ever taken by the new entity. You must understand first of all this thing in the initial stages itself. So valueless asset, who will then bear the valueless asset because the existence of the entity has come to an end. As you know, owners are responsible. When owners have the right to take away the part of the profit, it is their responsibility also to bear the losses. Actually, they are a sort of losses. So that is why all the valueless asset will be transferred to the debit side of the shareholder. So these items will be transferred, T oblique F I have written, transferred to the debit side of, to the debit side of, to the debit side of shareholders account. All these items you are going to transfer to the debit side of shareholders account. SH stands for shareholders account. Is it clear to you or not? Besides that, besides that, now we come over to all these items. As far as cash, no doubt about that, that purchasing company is taking over your assets. That with purchasing company is taking over your cash and bank and other assets. But as per the agreement, sometime purchasing company may not take over your cash. Is it clear to you? So you have to be careful only with respect to cash. Only with respect to cash, you have to be careful. If cash has been taken over, if taken over, if cash has been taken over, 
आई एम सिंपली राइटिंग इफ टेकन ओवर टी ऑब्लिक ओ टी ऑब्लिक ओ मीन्स इफ इट हैज बीन टेकन ओवर बाय द परचेसिंग एंटिटी देन यू आर गोइंग टू ट्रांसफर इट टू द डेबिट साइड ऑफ रियलाइजेशन अकाउंट डेबिट साइड ऑफ रियलाइजेशन अकाउंट डेबिट साइड ऑफ रियलाइजेशन अकाउंट इन डेट केस आई एम गोइंग टू ट्रांसफर दिस आइटम टू द डेबिट साइड ऑफ रियलाइजेशन अकाउंट इज इट क्लियर टू यू और नॉट If cash has been taken over, then I am going to transfer it to the debit side of realization account. In short form, I have written REAL. If not taken over, if cash hasn't been taken over, NTO not taken over. In that case, I am going to simply transfer it to the debit side of cash account. So regarding cash only, you will have to exercise the caution. Debit side of cash account. Is it clear to you or not? If cash is not taken over, in that case only you are going to take it to the debit side of the what we call cash account. You will simply write balance brought down. If cash has been taken over, you are going to transfer it to the credit side of the realization account. As far as all other assets are concerned, all the other asset, whether property, plant and equipment, land and building, correct. tangible asset intangible asset stock data whatever other assets are there all the other assets all the other assets will be transferred to the debit side shall be transferred to the debit side transferred to the debit side of realization account transfer to the debit side of realization account debit side of realization account whether taken over or not that is very important all other items of assets whether taken over or not whether taken over or not you are going to transfer them to the debit side of realization account is it clear to you or not transfer to the debit side of realization account whether taken over or not whether taken over whether taken over or not irrespective of the fact whether other items have been taken over or not you are going to transfer them to the debit side of realization account is it clear to you that is how you are going to actually close your asset side once your asset side is closed obviously now you are under the second step you are going to move over to the liability side second step now you will close your liability side this should be your second step closer of liability side closer of liability side now you are going to close your liability side correct liability side now you are going to close your liability side as far as closer of liability side is concerned again the liability side can be actually segregated into three broad categories as a professional student you need to know all these things all these things then only you will be able to understand and comprehend the things and it will hold you in a good state not only for this particular chapter but later on when you are going to do amalgamation absorption internal reconstruction even over there you'll find it all these points are coming up to you very handy correct so now obviously as far as liability side is concerned we can divide the entire liability side into three major categories one is share capital no doubt about that another one is another one is reserves reserves and finally liabilities liabilities correct what i told entire liability side can be segregated or can be what we call divided into three parts one is capital another one is reserves and finally liabilities now as far as share capital is concerned it is very simple because we are preparing the shareholders account in this particular case as far as shareholders are concerned you are going to take the balance of the share capital to the credit side of the shareholder so it will be transferred to the credit side to the credit side of share holders account so closer of share capital is not going to pose any sort of what we call problem simply we are going to take the share capital to the to the credit side of shareholders account coming over to the reserve 
and you need to have a very sound knowledge of reserves. You need to have a very sound knowledge of reserves. Correct? I keep on telling all these things. Then only you will be able to solve the question in a proper manner. If we will look into the last four attempt, every year question is there. Correct? Where you require this sort of knowledge. Now I will tell you later on why, but first let me actually here explain the things. As far as reserves are concerned, we can divide the reserves into three broad categories. One is free reserve. One, free reserves. One is free reserves. Under the free reserves, generally we include, generally we include under the free reserves. Free reserves will include like general reserve, correct, like reserve fund, I am using the short form, don't worry about that, you are already acquainted with all these things. Even retained earnings, RE, profit and loss account balance, P, profit and loss account, PL, for example, security premium. Now, some of you may say, sir, security premium is a capital nature reserve, absolutely, no doubt about that. I am not telling that it is not a capital nature reserve. I am telling it is a free reserve. Remember one thing, the existence of this company has come to an end. So all these reserves have become free now. If there will be any balance, let us say, in workmen compensation fund account, it will also be treated as free reserve. Is it clear to you or not? Even if there is any balance in insurance fund, it will also be treated as free reserve. Remember one thing. Is it clear to you or not? If such balances appear on the what we call liability side, then you will treat them as free reserve. Now, what, what will be the treatment of the free reserve? All the free reserves will be taken to the credit side of shareholders account. Now, let me caution you. Purchasing company can take over your assets in real sense, which are assets, correct? And liabilities only. Purchasing company cannot take over, or should I say purchasing company will not take over your share capital, your reserves, or for that instance, your valueless item. Purchasing company will take over only your assets and liability. Remember one thing and never let it escape out of your memory. So as far as security premium is concerned, sorry, free reserves are concerned, it will be transferred, as I told you, to the credit side of shareholders account. Transfer to the credit side of shareholders account. Credit side of shareholders account. Is it clear to you? All these items will be transferred to the credit side of shareholders account. As simple as that. Now, as far as reserves are concerned, I told you reserves can be segregated into three broad categories. The second category will be, second category will be known, in fact, second category is known as statutory reserve. S-T-A-T-U, T-O-R-Y, statutory reserves. Now, what are statutory reserves? Statutory reserves are those reserves which an entity is forced to make. For example, if, if an entity is operating in a notified zone, say economic zone, say special economic zone, or what we call any what we call notified area, like industrial park, correct, or software park. So these are basically notified zones. If an entity operates in a notified zone, sometimes there are some pressure and foundations, correct? by the law upon such entities to transfer every year a part of their profit to these reserves and these reserves are known as statutory reserves. So statutory reserves are basically, uh, you can say, uh, made by an entity simply out of force, correct? Out of not willingness, but out of some force. They are compelled, they are bounded. Is it clear? So generally under the statutory reserves, we include items like for, you must have heard about these items like foreign project reserve account, correct? Foreign project reserve account, foreign project, foreign project reserve account, foreign project reserve account. Foreign project reserve account is also known as export profit surplus. It is also known as export profit surplus, export profit surplus also known as export profit surplus. Besides that, development reserve, development reserve, development reserve, 
development reserve many among us do not know is also known as investment allowance reserve is also known as investment allowance reserve investment allowance reserve so investment allowance reserve and development reserve are one and same thing i've already told you if you are an entity operating in a specified zone in a notified zone obviously you will definitely get some freebies from the government in the form of what we call tax exemption and so and so but besides that you will be under some sort of pressure to create every year a part of your profit and transfer the same to foreign project reserve account development reserve reserve account investment allowance reserve account and in tax you generally study t board reserve account t board reserve account is also a statutory reserve account correct anyway now what will be the treatment the treatment is that again you are going to transfer these reserves to the credit side of credit side of shareholders account credit side of shareholders account credit side of shareholders account so even the even these type of reserves will be transferred to the credit side of shareholders account so so far under the liability side what we have seen that share capital free reserves and statutory reserves are transferred to the credit side of shareholders account very easy and very simple now we come over to the next part the next part of reserve is i told you reserves are divided into three types of part under the third category i will include specific reserves what are specific reserves specific reserves specific reserves name itself is signifying what exactly the specific reserves are correct name itself is telling what exactly the specific reserves are specific reserves is specific particular that means such reserves are created particularly for a particular purpose and generally specific reserves are nothing but these are known as provisions the provisions are called as specific reserves many among us do not know these minor things for example suppose if i would say provision for doubtful debts now provision for doubtful debts we call it provision but it is a specific reserve in the sense that it is created specifically for a particular asset so provision for depreciation provision for depreciation similarly provision for doubtful debts isn't it or not provision for doubtful debts all these are specific reserves provision for doubtful debts sometime you create a stock reserve a stock reserve is generally created by the entities to meet any decline in the value of the stock it is also what we call a specific reserve sometime investment reserve is created to meet decline in value of investment it is also a specific reserve investment reserve so these are basically specific reserves you can call them provisions no problem so point here is that what will be the treatment the treatment is that for example if i have created provision for depreciation obviously i must have created it against what we call some particular asset and that asset i must have transferred to the debit side of the realization account because their corresponding assets are always transferred to the debit side of realization account that is the reason actually why all the specific reserves will be taken to the credit side of realization account is it clear to you so we are going to transfer all the specific reserve to the credit side of realization account credit side of realization account credit side of realization account is it clear to you absolutely clear okay if presume that if everything is clear to you then i will shift the focus towards the next item in the balance sheet if you remember i told you your entire what we call liability side can be divided into share capital reserves and liability now you know the treatment that how to close the share capital by simply transferring it to the credit side of the shareholders account you also know the treatment of what we call free reserves again you will take it to the credit side of share capital the statutory reserve credit side of share capital only thing is that a specific reserve will be taken to the credit side of the realization account now coming over to the liabilities what we mean by liability in fact all the remaining item in the balance sheet will fall under the category of liability no doubt about that all the remaining item but suppose as a professional student i am going to ask you what we mean by liability how will you deliver me the answer 
Correct, these are small things, but as a professional student, you should be in the know of all these things. For example, whenever you do the accounting, you must understand that you are confronting, you are facing actually three types of situation. You are dealing with three parties, one first party, then second party, then third party. Sir, what is this first party? The entity is known as the or organization is known as the first party. Is it clear to you? Entity is known as the first party. The owners are known as second party. And combinedly both these parties are known as internal party. Combinedly both these parties are known as internal parties. Is it clear to you or not? And obviously the parties other than the first and second one will be known as third party. Is it clear to you or not? Parties other than the first and second one will be known as third parties. So, if, if an organization owes anything to the third party, that is known as liability. Is it clear to you or not? If I told you, it is very simple. If organization owes anything to the third party, then it is known as liability. It is as simple as that. So, I... Actually, I do not want to explain all these things in detail, but the point is that I cannot stop myself. So, I hope now you got the meaning of liability quite well. In fact, all the remaining item at this level, I need not require to prepare a list of liability. You know that trade creditor, bills payable, sentry creditor, debentures, correct, all these are part of liability. So, whatever remaining items are there, that mean liability items are there, you are simply going to transfer them to the credit side of realization account credit side of realization account you are simply going to transfer them to the credit side of realization account that is how you are going to close your liability side so under the first step in the books of inquiry we are trying to find out how the accounting is done the first step is that we have to close all our asset under the second step, we have seen that we have to close our liabilities and how the liability side is closed down. Now, I hope everything is clear to you. Now, we move over to the third step. What is the third step? Quite obviously, because everything we are visualizing from the perspective of the, uh, that is, uh, acquiry company, whose business is coming to an end, whose existence has come to an end. So, we are visualizing everything from that particular angle. Now, under the third step. Under the third step, we are going to talk about what we call purchase consideration. Why we, we shall talk about purchase consideration? It is as simple as that because all our assets and liabilities have been taken over by some other entity, acquirer entity. And we are not going to transfer our assets and liability to the acquirer entity free of cost. So, obviously, acquirer en entity is going to deliver some what we call consideration for the same. So now, as an acquiry company, if we are going to receive the purchase consideration from the acquirer company, how we are going to deal with that? That is the issue actually which we are addressing now. So in this particular case, you need to understand that in practical life, generally, first of all, let us say A2 is the acquirer entity. I will write acquirer. This is the acquirer entity. Okay, I will simply call it A. And let us say B is the acquiry entity. B is the acquiry entity. Now this entity is taking over this entity. Obviously this entity is going to pay us some purchase consideration. But in practical life, purchase consideration is not immediately paid. First of all, there will be some agreement. Lots of meetings will be take, taken. Lots of meeting will take place between the shareholders of both the entities, the directors, managing directors, or correct. All the key management personnel will come to an end, finalize the draft, correct how the business will be taken over. That means lots of time actually is, lots of time gets consumed. So what my point is that, first of all, always there is an agreement that we are going to take over your business and for that we are going to pay you some price. The date on which everything is settled, the date on which everything is settled means where agreement has taken place that we are going to take over your business and we are going to give you this sort of what we call purchase consideration on that date the acquiry company is going to pass the entry and what will be the entry it is as simple as that you haven't received the purchase consideration but you are supposed to receive the purchase consideration because now the other entity is legally bounded to pay you is it clear to you so your entry will be acquirer company in the books of acquiry company, we are going to debit the acquirer company. 
एक्वायर कंपनी एक्वायर कंपनी वाई वी आर डेबिटिंग दर कंपनी बिकॉज एक्वायर कंपनी इज अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अवर डेटर नाउ वी आर सपोज टू रिसीव समथिंग फ्रॉम दैम and whatever we are going to receive from them that is that is a sort of gain to us so acquirer company account debit to realization account so this will be the entry which we are going to pass and this entry is known as basically purchase consideration due and after some time we will receive the amount of purchase consideration now purchase consideration as you know can be received in any mode by way of cash by way of shares by way of debentures by way of preference shares etc so in whatever form we are going to receive the purchase consideration i am going to debit the same for example if some portion of the purchase consideration is being received by way of cash i am going to debit the cash account if some portion is being received by way of shares then i am going to write shares in acquirer company account debit shares in acquirer company account debit likewise if some portion is being received in debenture i will write debentures in acquirer company account debit presuming that in this case purchase consideration is being received in what we call two modes that is cash and shares so i will write the entry cash account debit shares in acquirer company account debit to acquirer company because we are receiving the consideration from the acquirer company so i shall write here to acquirer company to acquirer company this is how we i am going to write the entry is it clear to you or not so as far as purchase consideration part is concerned that is also over so we have closed our asset our liabilities we have incorporated the purchase consideration now next two points are quite vital under the fourth step what i am supposed to do now under the fourth step fourth step deals with assets assets not taken over assets not taken over and sold assets not taken over and sold i have already told you earlier under the first step that besides cash whatever assets which would be appearing correct all those assets will be transferred to the debit side irrespective of the fact whether those assets have been taken over or not we have already talked about this correct suppose there is an item in the form of plant and machinery and that is not being taken over in spite of that i must have transferred it to the debit side of realization account and later on let us say question states that plant and machinery is sold for so and so item then i will have to pass the entry that mean if a particular asset hasn't been taken over and it is also given in the question that it has been sold then we are going to pass the entry the entry will be similar to the one which you have passed so many times in the past your entry will be cash account debit to realization account we will not write to plant and machinery account we will write to realization account correct why we will write to realization account because plant and machinery is already closed down by transferring to uh what we call realization account debit side of realization account so that is why we will write the entry cash account debit to realization account is it clear to you or not yes sir it is clear to us if it is clear to us then similarly another important point is fifth point there may be a situation that some liabilities are there which might not have been taken over is it it or not if that is the case then how we are going to deal up with that liabilities not taken over liabilities liabilities not taken over so if there are some liabilities which haven't been taken over correct obviously then it is your duty it is the duty of the acquiry company to pay off such liability and our entry will be realization account debit to cash account our entry will be realization account debit to cash account you might be wondering sir why we are not writing that name of that particular liability the reason is that that liability is already closed we have already transferred such liability to the credit side of realization account all the liability whether taken over or not are transferred to the credit side of realization account is it clear to you so that is the reason actually when you will pay your entry will be realization account debit to cash account clear 
Now after this, after the fifth step, the sixth step is related to expenses. To expenses. When acquirer company will sell its business and acquirer company will purchase the business, there might be what we call some expenses known as cost of liquidation expenses. Correct? So, what will be the treatment of those expenses? What will be the treatment of those expenses? For example, if the question states that expenses have been borne by acquiry company, Expenses have been borne by acquiry company. Expenses amounted to 10,000, 50,000 and borne by acquiry company. If acquiry company will bear the expenses borne by acquiry company. Correct? Suppose if it is written that expenses have been borne by acquiry company, quite obviously acquiry company will have to pass the entry and what entry the acquiry company in this particular case is going to pass? Very simple entry, realization account debit to cash account. It is as simple as that. Realization account debit to cash account. This is the entry the acquiry company is going to pass. However, sometime it may be written in the question that expenses have been borne by acquirer company. Expenses borne by acquirer company. Expenses borne by acquirer company. Expenses borne by acquirer company. If it is written in this manner, expenses borne by acquirer company. Acquirer company. Then what will be the treatment? If expenses have been borne by acquirer company, then in that particular case, in that particular case, acquirer company will treat such expenses, will acquirer company will treat such expenses as acquisition cost, correct? It will treat these expenses as cost of acquiring the business. However, the entry will be profit and loss account debit. That means such expenses will be debited to profit and loss account. Profit and loss account debit to cash account. In simple words, if acquirer company will bear the expenses, acquirer company will expense those expenses. Expense those expenses means it will treat such expenses as expenses of revenue nature. Is it clear to you or not? So these are the things which you may have to face to uh, what we call do the accounting in the books of acquiry company but last and final step let me finish it up well so everything is done now and under the seventh step what I am going to do first of all I am going to tally the realization account I am going to tally the realization account correct whatever result I will get over there whether loss or profit whatever result I am going to get over there, I will transfer it to the owner's shareholder's account. Is it clear to you or not? Then under step number B, I am going to tell you cash and bank account. Cash bank account. I am going to tell you cash bank account. Whatever balance will be there, whatever balance will be there in cash or bank account, that balance will be transferred to the shareholders account. That balance will be transferred to the shareholders account. Is it clear to you? Now finally, we will come over to the shareholders account. And we will see that shareholder account is getting automatically tallied. Must get automatically tallied. And this will be verification of your solution. Must be automatically tallied automatically tell it automatically tell it now you might be wondering sir actually we prepared four accounts we have talked about only three accounts yes we are also preparing purchasing companies account but the moment we are going to receive the purchase consideration purchasing company account will automatically get tell it is it clear to you or not and we try to understand this question with the help of or what we call some practical. So this is how you are going to do the accounting in the books of acquiry company. And this scenario will come when purchasing company will take over 
all the assets and liability. Just to make you understand it better, we pick up first question 4.1 to begin the what we call discussion. Correct? Under 4.1, as you can see, it is written following is the balance sheet of stop limited. Name itself is the stop limited. And this balance sheet is on this particular date. In the balance sheet, what you are being given, you need to be aware of that. In the balance sheet of stop limited, we have share capital. Besides that, reserve and surplus is also their profit and loss account general reserve. There is no security premium. Just to make you aware of this particular fact that security premium can also fall under this category. But anyway, two items are appearing, profit and loss account and general reserve. Let me know quickly actually where I am going to transfer share capital. I am going to transfer share capital to the credit side of share capital account. I am going to transfer profit and loss account and general reserve to the credit side of shareholders account when I am going to later on close the liability side. Now in the li now we move over to the other item, non-current liability. Under the non-current liability, we have got only one item, 12% debenture. Of course, it is a liability. Creditors are also given in the question. There are no bills payable actually. It is just simply printed. Only two liabilities are there. It is very important to note down the liabilities of the what we call acquiry company. Correct? Then as far as asset side are concerned, land and building is given, plant and machinery is given. And you can see here you are being given preliminary expenses. Sorry, goodwill you are also being given. You are also being given preliminary expenses. Is it clear to you or not? Besides that, there are items like inventories, that is stock. You are also given trade receivable. You are also given cash and bank. So these are the items which are featuring in your what we call balance sheet. Is it clear to you or not? Now you let me know the treatment of what we call preliminary expenses. Where you are going to post the preliminary expenses. Preliminary expenses will be taken to the debit side of the shareholders account because it is a valueless item. This is what exactly we talked about earlier. Is it clear to you or not? Now we start the discussion over this particular question. Start Limited acquired the business of Stop Limited. So here it is clearly written that Start Limited is acquiring the business of what we call Stop Limited. So we have taken over the business of the Stop Limited and in the bracket it is written accepting cash at bank. That means this time cash and bank is not taken over. Cash and bank is not taken over. So we will not take the cash and bank account to the debit side of realization account. This is the point which we need to take care of. Cash and bank will be transferred to cash and bank account. That means we will simply write the balance brought down. But besides cash, whatever other assets are there, whether taken over or not, will be transferred to the debit side of realization account. Then we have 12% debentures in this case. So question says that in this particular case, purchasing company is not taking over cash at bank and purchasing company is also not taking over one liability out of two liability. There are two liability creditors and debentures. And if it is written that one liability is not being taken over, quite obviously it means all other liabilities are being taken over. So quite obviously we come to the conclusion and we can infer that creditors have been taken over. And further it is given 4 rupees 16 lakh 80 thousand. So we have taken over the liabilities, sorry, all the assets and liability. And this 4 rupees 16 lakh 80 thousand means this is the amount of consideration. 4 rupees 16 lakh 80 thousand means the purchasing company is going to pay 16 lakh 80 thousand. Further, it is given payable rupees 15 lakh in the form of 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each at a premium of rupees 5 per share. Now, purchasing company will deliver the purchase consideration and for discharging the purchase consideration, purchasing company is going to offer 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each at 5. That means 1 lakh shares will be issued at the rate of 15 and balance amount will be given in cash. Correct. Further, it is given that Stop Limited redeemed its debenture at a premium of 10%. I just told you, if a particular liability is not taken over, in this case, debentures haven't been taken over. So quite obviously, it is the duty of the acquiry company to pay off that liability. So acquiry company has paid that particular liability that is debentures but at a premium of 10%. Further it is written that acquisition cost amounted to rupees 10,000 and borne by start limited. So acquisition cost or cost of expenses 
amounted to rupees 10000 but borne by purchasing company when expenses will be borne by purchasing company acquiring company is not going to write any entry the entry will be written in the books of what we call acquirer now you are required to close the books of stop limited and pass the entries in the books of start limited so this is how we are supposed to do the question we quickly take a note of the what we call items which are appearing in the balance sheet so that time and again i need not require to look at so I will do the question for you because this is the first question. Now most of you definitely are not going to write. I am very sure about this. And that is the mistake most of you actually commit. You think that solution is done. It is better actually. There is sir is sir has become old though so, and we are very young. So why we there is need for us to actually write? I know most of you are under this sort of impression. Anyway, first of all I am going to write books of acquiry company. So books of acquiry company even though it is extremely i have already told you freezing cold out here and for you i am taking the pain of writing you must also you must also actually correct follow all these things i would love that books of acquiry company whenever henceforth after all this discussion whenever you are going to prepare the acquiry companies in books of acquiry company Quite obviously, you are supposed to prepare all those four accounts. My advice is that always prepare first acquirer company's account. This is my advice, although it is not a necessity. Acquirer company's account or purchasing company's account. Correct? So, acquirer company's account you have prepared and it, it won't need much space. Then you prepare your realization account. It is always better to prepare it in this particular order. That will help you. Realization account. Then I am going to prepare the realization account. Realization account because I have to make you understand. So I am preparing it a bit longer than the required parameters. Correct realization account. Besides realization account also I am going to prepare shareholders account shareholders account but before that i will prepare cash account this is your my cash account and now i will prepare shareholders account these are the accounts which we may require to prepare in the books of acquiry company shareholders account correct i will look into the question when you will look into the question you will find that because question nowadays we have just wait in the question actually we are given liability items first so no problem we can start with the liability also there is no harm in it first of all i am share capital is given i have already told you the share capital will be transferred to the shareholders account but here don't commit this mistake by simply writing buy balance because you are closing the share capital account share capital account is appearing in the balance sheet on the liability side it is having a credit balance isn't it or not so your entry will be share capital account debit to shareholder account so that is why share capital will get closed so better to write share better to write actually share capital so i will write here share capital and the amount of share capital amount of share capital is 10 lakh right 10 lakh besides that we saw actually in the balance sheet we saw in the balance sheet under reserve and surplus some items were appearing and i told you all the free reserves will be transferred to the credit side of realization account. So, whatever profit or loss account balance you are having, you will transfer it to the credit side of shareholders account. Whatever general reserve is existing in the balance sheet, you are going to transfer to the credit side of shareholders account. Now, besides that, there are two liabilities which are given to us. As far as rule for liability is concerned, I have already told you all the liability will be posted to the credit side of realization account, whether taken over or not. This line, these wordings, please mind these wordings carefully, correct? Whether taken over or not, irrespective of the fact whether liabilities have been taken over or not, we are going to transfer them, post them to the credit side of realization account. So that is the reason in this particular case, 12% debentures which are appearing in the balance sheet, I am going to take them to the credit side of realization account and I am going to write here 150000 correct? Even though debentures haven't been taken over yet, I have transferred them to the credit side of realization account. 
Is it clear to you? Likewise, there was another liability in the question in the form of creditors. So I am going to write here creditors. Now amount of creditors given in the question is 2 lakh. So I am going to transfer 2 lakh to the credit side of realization account. So with that, we have closed the entire what we call liability side. Is it clear to you? Now we come over to the asset side. As far as asset side is concerned, under the asset side, here I am going to write, first of all, whatever items which are appearing in the balance sheet on the asset side, all those items will be transferred. All the assets, in fact, will be transferred to the debit side of realization account, but we have to exercise caution only with respect to one one item of asset that is cash is it clear to you if cash is taken over we will still transfer it to realization account if not taken over then to cash account so on such count we what we call is start preparing the realization account first of all i write here land and building now land and building given is three lakh so it will be posted to the debit side of realization account is it clear to you in fact all assets have been taken over even though assets have been taken over or not like liabilities, they will be posted to the debit side of realization account, correct? After the land and building, we have plant and machinery in this particular question. Plant and machinery, I think, is equal to 6,70,000. 6,70,000. Then in the balance sheet, there is goodwill. Now, goodwill is an intangible asset, correct? Goodwill is an intangible asset. However, however, under NDS, we generally keep goodwill as a separate line item from other intangible asset but no doubt goodwill is also an intangible asset goodwill patent copyright trademark licenses correct so even goodwill will be posted here amount of goodwill is actually 50000 so i will write goodwill 50000 all the assets will be posted to the debit side of realization account whether taken over or not correct all the assets however there is another item in this question Preliminary expenses. Now, preliminary expenses, as we know, is a valueless item. I told you preliminary expense, underwriting commission, discount on issue of share, miscellaneous expenditure. These are valueless item. So, preliminary expenses will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account and I am going to write here 10,000. Is it clear? After that, there is list of what we call some current asset and current assets will be posted also to the debit side. For example, inventories or stock which is given in the question at 4,50,000, so I will post it at 4,50,000. Besides that, we are being given data, so I am going to write data. Amount of data or trade receivable is given as 2,50,000, so I will write here 2,50,000. Now we come over to cash account, because in this particular question, it is very specifically mentioned that cash hasn't been taken over, so that is the reason cash account I am going to write here balance brought down if cash is not taken over then only you are going to write cash cash balance as balance brought down that means we are not going to transfer it to the debit side of realization account and in the question i think the cash balance was thirty thousand. is it clear to you or not right sir absolutely once you have posted and once you are done up with your these steps of closing down assets and closing down liabilities under the next step what you are supposed to do, as I told you, you will take care of the purchase consideration. In this case, I have already told you, purchase consideration actually given to you as 16,80,000, I think, right? 16,80,000 was purchase consideration. 16,80,000, it is the amount of purchase consideration. And it was given in the question that purchasing company is going to deliver purchase consideration by issuing shares and purchasing company will discharge the purchase consideration in order to discharge the purchase consideration purchasing company will offer one lakh shares of rupees 10 each but at the rate of 15 that mean one lakh into 15 that mean out of 16 lakh 80 thousand 15 lakh worth of payment is by way of shares by way of shares and balance amount balance it is very specifically mentioned in the question that balance amount will be paid by way of cash so what will be the amount which we are going to receive in cash that will be equal to 180000 isn't it or not so my first entry as i told you first entry will be there is no need to write the entry but you must understand your first entry will be 
I told you, first of all, we pass the entry due entry, the acquirer company account debit to realization, acquirer company account debit to realization. As per this particular entry, realization account will get credited and on the credit side of the realization account, I am going to write by acquirer company account. You can write the name of that company also by acquirer company account and in bracket, I have mentioned purchase consideration due and acquirer by acquirer companies purchase consideration amount is 16 lakh 80 thousand first i will write here the moment i am going to write here purchase consideration sorry the moment i am going to write here by acquirer company it must click to me that i am also preparing acquirer company's account and i will cross it to the debit side of acquirer company's account over there i am going to write to realization account that is equal to 16 lakh 80 thousand now we are going to receive now we are going to receive 16 lakh 80 thousand from acquirer company and the entry will be cash account debit 1 lakh 80 thousand because we are receiving 1 lakh 80 in cash and shares in acquirer company 15 lakh 15 lakh worth of amount we are receiving by way of shares so next entry will be cash account debit shares account debit to acquirer company to acquirer company that means you will receive from the acquirer company, you will write towards the credit side of acquirer company by cash, 1,80,000. So you have written here 1,80,000. You will receive 1,80,000. Then you are going to write shares in, shares in acquirer company account, 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 15,000,000. The moment you are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration, the moment you are going to receive the amount of purchase consideration, this particular account will stand closed. Is it clear to you? So this account is closed. But important point is that you have received cash. Obviously, you are going to post it to the debit side of cash account and over there you are going to write to acquirer company account, to acquirer company account, to acquirer company account. How much the amount will be equal to 1,80,000 because 1,80,000 you receive. So portion of purchase consideration received in cash first of all will be posted to the cash account because simply because you are preparing cash account and whatever whatever portion besides cash is there of the purchase consideration whatever portion is there correct. I told you the portion received in cash will be posted to the cash account and all other mode of payment or purchase consideration whether in shares whether in debentures whether in preference shares suppose if in this case you would have received received cash debentures shares etc so cash would have been posted to cash account and all the other modes will be posted to the shareholders account directly so for example in this case now we have received the shares and shares will be posted deb directly to the what we call shareholders account and i will write here two shares in two shares in acquirer company account two shares in acquirer company account two shares in acquirer company account and we are receiving shares in this case equal to 5 lakh 1 lakh shares of uh, how much actually we are receiving in this particular case i have forgotten what was the amount of purchase consideration? 1 lakh shares into 15, 15 lakhs. So 15 lakh worth of payment will find place on the debit side of shareholder account. Portion of purchase consideration received in cash will be posted to the cash account and all other forms will be posted to the debit side of shareholders account. Is it clear to you or not? So now, till up to this particular point, everything is clear. I told you in the fourth step, watch out for any asset not taken over and sold. Although in this question, there is no other asset which is not taken over. Only cash is not taken over. Besides cash, no other asset is there which hasn't been taken over. So now you will look over to the liability. Out of these two liability, is there any liability which hasn't been taken over? Yes, sir debentures have been taken debentures haven't been taken over so quite obviously you will pay off now debentures and in order to pay the debentures you are going to write here to cash you are going to write here to cash you will pay the debenture amount of debenture actually is one lakh fifty thousand how much it is one lakh fifty thousand and it is given in the question that acquiry company is paying the debenture at ten percent premium 
So that means debentures have been paid at 165,000. So you write here 165,000. The moment you are going to write here 165, immediately, immediately post it to the credit side of cash account also. And over there you are going to write here by realization 165,000. Is it clear to you or not? Now, last point is expense. But problem is that expenses have been borne by acquirer company and not by the acquiring company. So now we are going to simply tally the realization account. If I am going to tally the realization account, I will find actually that my credit side is higher. And I always keep on telling you also to kindly do the calculations of your own because sometimes when we speak simultaneously and write simultaneously and do lots of discussions, sometimes we might commit some mistake with respect to calculation also. However, there is profit of 1,55,000. My calculation is not that fast to be very honest with you, but everything is now to be very honest memorized. Net answers are 99% are retained by me. So this is that profit. Now the point is that I told you whatever result will be there in the realization account because credit side is more, it will be considered as profit. And that result will be posted to the owner's account, shareholder's account. So I will write here profit transferred to shareholder's account. Profit transferred to shareholder's account. We will transfer this profit to shareholder's account. So immediately I'm going to write it towards the credit side of shareholder's account now realization account or realization profit 1,55,000. So 1,55,000 I have transferred. Now, after what we call finishing up realization account, we should tally the cash account. Earlier I told you that whatever balance will be there in the cash account, you are going to take that balance. In fact, you are going to transfer that balance to the shareholder's account. After all, this balance belongs to the owner now. So whatever balance is there, 2,10,000 minus 1,65,000, what will be the balance? I will write here by shareholder's account. So that means whatever balance is there, I am going to pay that balance to the shareholder's account. So 2,10 minus 165, in my opinion, it will be equal to 45. So now cash account is also tallied and we will transfer this cash balance to the debit side of shareholders account. I will write here to cash and I told you a moment ago, now your shareholders account must get automatically tallied. Let's see. This is your 15 lakh 55,000, 10, 13, 14 and 1 lakh 55. So 15 lakh 55, 15 lakh 55, it is absolutely tallied. Is it clear to you or not? That is how the accounting is done in the books of acquiry entity. Now, in this question also, they may ask you to pass the entries in the books of the acquirer. So in the books of the acquirer, what entry I am going to pass? Books of acquirer. Books of acquirer. Books of acquirer. Now in the books of acquirer, I am going to pass the entry. I am the acquirer now. Remember one thing, India Ascended in 3 will come into play. I have taken the control over this particular enterprise. Acquisition method of accounting will come into play. And under this, first of all, I will take into account, first of all, I will take into account which are the assets which I have taken over. As an acquirer entity, I will consider all the assets taken over. Now, if I will look into the question, we find that we are taking over the goodwill of the other enterprise. So, goodwill account debit 50,000. Correct. We are taking over all the assets almost barring what we call cash, land and building account. Generally, the rule says that all the assets and liability must be recorded at fair value. So, we are presuming that whatever value are, which are appearing in the balance sheet are equal to fair value. Is it clear to you? So, Land and building was given in the question at rupees 3 lakh. So I am going to write here 3 lakh. And similarly, then plant and machinery. We have picked up all the items except cash. Plant and machinery balance was 6 lakh 70 thousand, if I am not wrong. And then we have stock. The stock was 4 lakh 50 thousand. 
and then daters daters is equal to two lakh fifty thousand daters is equal to two lakh fifty thousand correct these are the assets which we have taken over i have already told you in the books of acquirer entity we are going to record all the assets correct which we have taken over Besides that, the liability. Now, the point here is that we have taken over only one liability out of two, that is creditors. So, liability which have been taken over, I am going to write here creditors. Now, creditors equal to 2,10,000. 2,10,000. Is it clear to you? Then, if I have written here assets on the debit side and on the credit side, I have written what we call creditors. It means so far, I have written net assets. What is the net amount of assets I am receiving? Correct. This is what I have noted down. Now I will write here two consideration. When we write here two consideration, what does it mean? That means now we are comparing the amount of net asset with the consideration which we have paid. Is it clear to you or not? And the consideration amount is 16,80,000. So I am going to write here 16,80,000. Obviously, now you will take the difference. If the difference will come over to the debit side, it will be treated as goodwill. If the difference will come over to the credit side, it will be treated as capital reserve, as per India Standard in three. Now, in this particular case, I will tell you the difference straightway. I do not want to waste that time. This difference is coming over to the debit side. And difference is almost equal to, but please do the check also. It is always better to do the checks by yourself. Correct? 1,70,000. 1,70,000. Now, you might wonder, sir, we have written goodwill twice. Yes, you are right, absolutely. So, better here to write goodwill on business combination, BC, goodwill on business combination, correct? So that you can segregate this goodwill. So, this is how you will have to pass the entry in the books of the acquirer company. And then under the second entry, you are going to discharge the consideration. The consideration which you are supposed to discharge is 16,80,000. Now you let me know what will be the entry. Consideration account debit. 16,80,000 you are supposed to discharge. And as a acquirer company, you know that you are paying off cash 1,80,000. So obviously you are going to write here 1,80,000. And besides that, you are also what we call issuing shares. But because you are the issuer, you are the issuing company, so you will mention share capital here at nominal value. That means separately at nominal value and premium. So 1 lakh shares of 10 each, that is 10 lakh. And besides that, you will write here 2 security premium, 1 lakh shares into 5. 1 lakh shares into 5. See, don't confuse it with common control. Under common control, we have to mention only the nominal value over here and here also. It is not a case of common control. It is a simple case of India standard and three. Is it clear to you or not? And then there were some expenses in the question. It was also given. And I told you if there will be some expenses borne by what we call acquirer entity as per India standard and three, those expenses will not be treated as capital nature expenses. Rather, it will be treated as what we call cost of acquisition and it will be expensed and the entry will be profit and loss account debit. Profit and loss account debit to cash account. So this is how you are going to do the accounting or general entries in the books of what we call this entity, acquirer entity. Is it clear to you or not? Is it clear? absolutely clear well then if it is clear to you because problem is that sometime classmate for instance you must have noticed last time the class was a little bit longer than the usual dur duration sometime what happened actually we are compelled to finish down the class earlier than the stipulated time it's still 10 minutes are remaining to be very honest with you but I do not want to start the new topic immediately. The reason being is that if I will start this particular topic, I must follow it up with the next one also. And if I am going to leave this particular topic on halfway stage, then you will not be able to comprehend the way actually I would love you to. So that is the reason. With your what we call permission, I am taking off today a little bit earlier, that means 10 minutes earlier than the usual time. But surely and 
Surely we are going to actually meet you in the next session and we are going to discuss over there not only the section 5 because in this case you must have noticed, in this particular case you must have noticed that purchase consideration was given. But sometime now we will face next question in the next section where purchase consideration will not be given. And we will see later on that if purchase consideration is not given, then there are three methods to find out the purchase consideration. We will see later on one among them is net assets method. Besides that, what we call intrinsic value of shares method and net payment method. So when purchase consideration is not given, in that case, we shall have to find out the amount of purchase consideration. And especially the question wherein Intrinsic value of method is generally asked, to be very honest with you, almost with great regularity in all the attempts, in all the four previous attempts, we saw questions wherein you required IVS, intrinsic value method. So that's the reason actually, next one is going to be pretty strong, uh, what we call session. It might exceed the usual time also. It could be what we call almost equal to two hours rather than one and a half hours. Correct? So, shall meet you in the next session. Hope you are enjoying the sessions and keep on writing. And because your um, comments in the YouTube videos gives zeal to us and of course motivation to others. Correct? So, on such count, we take leave of you. Finish that. And we are finishing today's this particular session. As usual, hope you must have enjoyed it. And looking forward to meet you in the next session. So, till that particular time, have a good night.